everybody to our business math videos. Today's presentation, we're doing more on limits. This is Magda Talib al Hinayi from Sultan Qaboos University, and I welcome you all to our presentation. We start with one sided limits. We are talking about one side of the point in question. Let's say if we're talking about x equals a, so we'll take one side of a either from the right or from the left and we to consider for instance the limit f of x as x approaches a from the right and we denote this by a plus sign we'll put it here this limit is equal to l so we make f of x close to l as much as we wish for all x sufficiently close to a where x is greater than a without having x being a itself we do the same thing for the limit f of x as x approaches a from the left and we denote the left by a minus sign. This limit is equal to L. So we can make f of x as close as we wish to L as long as we have x sufficiently close to a where x is less than a. Of course, without actually letting x be a itself. We want to evaluate one-sided limits. There we go. We take an example given f of x is equal to x whenever x is between 0 and 1, whenever x is in the closed interval 0 to 1, and it's equal to 3 minus x whenever x is in the open interval 1 and 2. And we denote this, uh, we have the, the graph for this function in front of us. This is from 0 to 1, the closed interval, we put the closed circles, and we draw the straight line f of x is equal to x, as we see in front of us. Here is a straight line with the slope minus 1, and it's 3 minus x, and it has, it's in the interval from 1 to 2, open interval, we put open circles. We want to evaluate the limit, the following limits. We will have eight limits to evaluate, and we will take them one by one. The first limit, we want to evaluate limit f of x as x approaches 1 from the left. So we refer to the graph and the definition of the function to find these uh, uh, limits and values of the functions. Okay. So for the first one, we go to the 1 from the left. We are approaching the value 1. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to 1. In the second case, we are approaching 1 from the right. When we approach 1 from the right, we are getting closer and closer. The value of the function is getting closer and closer to 2. Although 2 is not in, 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 you know, included with us because it's an open circle, yet we're not asking for the value of the function. We are asking for the limit. So the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of the function f of x is equal to 2. Now, we see that the left, uh, the lim limit from the left and the limit from the right, they are not equal. So we cannot find the limit for number 3, which is the limit f of x as x gets closer to 1, does not exist. f of 1 is what? Yes, from the given of the, you know, definition of the function, we have that at x equals to 1. We can take this definition, we plug in 1 here, so the value of the function will be equal to 1. The fifth, find the limit of f of x as x goes to 0 from the right. As we go to 0 from the right, the function is getting closer and closer to 0, so the limit is in front of us equal to 0. What is f of 0? Okay f of 0, oh, let's see, that it's written here, we cannot consider the limit as x goes closer to 0 from the left side, because from the left side, we don't have the definition. Our definition starts from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 2, okay? So we don't know how the function behaves to the left of 0, so we cannot consider this situation. Number 6, we are asked to find f of 0 also from the graph or from the definition, we have f of 0 is equal to 0. Next, we want to find the value as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, okay? 
As we get closer and closer to two from the left, we see in front of us that the function is getting closer and closer to the value one. The same thing here, we are having f of two. What is f of two? We don't know, it is not defined. Two is not included in our you know, definition, in our domain for the function. We move on. Now we see the following theorem. Let f be a function defined on an open interval i containing c. Then limit f of x as x approaches c is equal to l if and only if the limit from the left as x approaches c from the left of f of x is equal to l and the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x is equal to l. So if we have these two limits, being equal to a quantity, then the limit of the function at C will also be equal to the same quantity. And we are having here an if and only if phrase. So whenever we have if and only if, we see that the two statements are either true or false. The first statement is this one. The second statement is after the if and only if. So both statements are true together or false together. So if the limit is equal to L, then we will have the left and the right hand limits will be also equal to L. If the limit is, does not exist, then the left and the right hand limits are not equal to L. It may not even exist, as I said. Let's take an example. We are given f of x is equal to 2 minus x when x is in the open interval 0 to 1. And it's equal to x minus 2 all squared when x is in the open interval 1 to 2. And we have the graph here in front of us. This is the straight line. And this is a part of the parabola, which is shifted two units to the right. And we see the open circles denoting the open intervals. Find each of the following limits. Okay, and we'll take them again one by one in our uh, solution. We'll be using the definition of the function and the curve. Solution. As x approaches 1 from the left, we see that f of x also approaches 1. So let's approach 1 from the left. We see that the function is approaching 1 from also, as x gets closer and closer to 1 from the left. So the limit of f of x as x goes to 1 from the left is equal to 1. Question number 2, we are asked to find the limit of f of x as x goes closer and closer to 1 from the right. Again, we are getting closer and closer to 1 from the right. We see that the function is getting closer and closer to 1. So the limit from the left and the limit from the right, both they go to the same quantity. So by the theorem, question number three will be answered. So the limit exists and it's equal to one. Both right and left limits are equal to one. Therefore, we have the limit f of x as x goes to one is one. Although it is not defined, you know, as we said, it doesn't have to be defined at one. f of one, we cannot find it. The question number four, you say it's not defined because we have an open circle here. Now, we, as x goes closer to 0 from the right, find the limit. We go to closer to 0 from the right. We see that the function is getting closer to the value 2. So there we go. The limit of f of x as x goes to 0 from the right is equal to 2. This is from the graph. What is f of 0? It's not defined again because 0 is not in the domain of the function. What is the limit of f of x as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left? Yes, we can see that it approaches 0. Okay, what is f of 2? Again, it's not defined. It's not in the domain of the given function. Let's see another example. In this example, we also have a piecewise function, a function f of x defined on the interval the closed interval from 0 to 2 to be x minus 1 all squared, provided that x is not equal to 1 on this interval. 
when x is equal to 1, f of x is clearly equal to 1. We are asked to find the following limits. But this is the graph of the function. Again, it's a parabola, which is shifted one unit to the right. We are asked to find these four values. So we start our solution. We use the graph and the definition of the function from the graph. When we get closer to 1 from the left, the, the limit uh, the function gets closer to 0. So the limit of the in the first required is equal to 0. Also, when we get closer to 1 from the right, again, the limit f of x as x gets closer to 1 from the right is 0. So both of them are you know, equal to each other. The rim limit from the left, the limit from the right, and they are both equal to zero. So clearly we can say that limit f of x as x goes to one is equal to zero because the left limit and the right limit are equal to one another. They are both equal to zero. So here we answer part one, part two, part three. Part four is asking you to find f of 1. f of 1 is not, is an open here. It's open here. But by definition, f of 1 is 1. Okay, so here we have f of 1 is equal to 1. Either from the graph you can see it in front of you or you can see it straightforward from the definition. Let's see. Example. We are given f of x equals to x squared whenever x is in the closed interval from 0 to 1. And it's equal to 2 minus x whenever x is in the semi-closed interval 1 to 2 and it's closed from the side of 2. Let's see the graph of this function in front of us. We have it here to be, as you see in front of you, a parabola, a part of a parabola and a straight line with a negative slope. So... What is limit f of x as x gets closer to 1 from the left? It's clear, of course, from the definition that we have the following, that the limit from the left and the limit from the right and from the curve, they are both equal and they are both equal to 1. So we can say that limit f of x as x goes to 1 is also equal to the same 1. So what is the value of the function at x equals to 1. Again, we take this part or from the graph, we see it is equal to 1. We move on. In this slide, we are talking about infinite limits. So we say that limit f of x as x goes to a is equal to infinity. If we can make f go arbitrarily large for all sufficiently close uh, values of x to 8 from both sides. We don't have to have x equal to exactly a, but we make it get closer and closer to a. Also, we say that limit f of x as x goes to a is equal to minus infinity if we can make f of x arbitrarily large and negative for all x getting closer and closer to a from both sides, without having a itself to be one of the values of x. Let's see an example. Evaluate each of the following limits. We have limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 of x, limit of 1 of x as x goes to 0 from the left, and limit of 1 of x as x goes to 0. Let's see this solution. Again, we make values and try to predict the limit. We take minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.01, minus 0 0.001, minus 0 0.0001. And we calculate the corresponding 1 over x. It is minus 10, minus 100, increasing and increasing. As x gets smaller and smaller, the 1 over x gets smaller and smaller uh, or get larger and larger in negativity. You understand me? So it's getting closer to infinity as x gets closer to, it's getting closer, sorry, to minus infinity as x gets closer to the zero from the left. Now let's see the other case. As we get to closer to zero from the right, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 
0 0.001, 0 0.0001, and so on. We will have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. So 1 over x is getting very large as x gets closer and closer to 0 from the right. We can see that one is going to minus infinity. The other case, it's going to plus infinity. And we graph the function. We see that this is the graph of 1 over x for values of x less than 0 or values of x greater than 0. OK, we see that the limit of 1 over x as x goes to plus to 0 from the right, it's plus infinity. And the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 0 from the left is minus infinity. We see that the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 0 does not exist. Example, evaluate each of the following limits. We will have 6 over x squared. We want to find its limit as x gets closer to 0 from the right or as x gets closer to 0 from the left or as x gets closer to 0, and that's it. We will do the following. We see that x gets closer to 0. We are making the square, you know, get smaller and smaller. It's getting smaller and smaller, so the square is even getting smaller and smaller, so the whole fraction is getting bigger and bigger, going to infinity. So as small as the smaller we take the values of x, we're staying positive and squaring them, we make them even smaller. So the whole fraction is getting larger and it's increasing. And it is positive, so it's going to plus infinity. OK, now let's see the other situation when we get closer to 0 from the left. Ro closer to 0 from the left, we see that, again, we are squaring something negative. So the whole thing is positive. Again, it is very small in the denominator, so the whole fraction is getting very large, going to plus infinity also. So we see that the limit from the left, right, from the right and the limit from the left, both are infinity. So this will have make us have the limit from both sides, as I said, they are equal to infinity, so the limit as x goes to 0 of 6 over x squared is also infinity. So we compare the three of them. We see that the limit from the right, the limit from the left, both are infinity. Here, the, the, the in, in this situation, the limit exists. But in the previous problem, the limit does not exist. Even though it is infinity here, but still it is existing. In the previous example, we could not say that it exists. It, it, we said only it does not exist. We cannot know if it is plus or minus infinity because to the left of zero in the previous example, it was undershooting to minus infinity. To the right of zero, it was overshooting to plus infinity. At zero itself, we cannot tell. So we say it does not exist. But in our situation, we see that from the right, from the left, both limits are infinity plus infinity. So the limit at 0 of 6x, six, 6 over x squared is equal to infinity. And here we draw our graph. Limits of a rational function at infinity. Now we will have f of x is a rational function in the form of a polynomial over polynomial. The degree of the numerator is n. The degree of the denominator is m. So we will have, uh, you know, uh, uh, values of x going to plus or minus infinity, and we're putting a condition that the leading coefficients are not zero. Now we have three cases. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, in such case, the limit of f of x as x goes to plus or minus infinity is equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. The second scenario, or before we move to the second scenario, let's take an example. We have x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over 1 minus x minus 3x squared as x goes to infinity. So we see that the degree of the numerator is equal to that of the denominator. The answer will be straightforward. The limit will be equal to 1 over minus 3. So 
it is minus 1 over 3, as we said. In the second scenario, we have n less than m. Then we have the limit of the function as x goes to plus or minus infinity is equal to 0. This happens when the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the denominator. Now we see an example. We have here x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x cubed plus 1. We want the limit as x goes to minus infinity. So here we see the degree of numerator is less than that of denominator. We see that uh, the limit is zero. Okay, the third case, if the degree of the numerator is higher than that of the denominator, then the limit is equal to infinity as x goes to plus or minus infinity. So let's take an example. We have x squared minus 1 over 3 minus x. We want to know what's the limit as x goes to infinity. So we see the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator. So the limit will be infinity. But which infinity? Is it plus infinity or minus infinity? We have to consider this algebraically. We take the leading coefficient in the numerator. We divide it by the leading coefficient of the denominator, and we see the sign. Here we have positive x squared, and here we have minus. So the, 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 the quotient, the, the result of the division is minus. So minus, and then you put infinity, you will get minus infinity. So the limit is equal to minus infinity.